So I have the distinct pleasure of uh, introducing this guy up here on top of me here. <laughs> Uh, this is Mike Simonson. He is the CEO of Altos Research. Uh, Mike and I have been friends for uh, almost 11 years now, I think, maybe even 12. Coming maybe up even 12, yeah. Right. Um, he is not only a, a great person all around, but he's got a huge brain. Um, he loves data and he loves real estate data. So he uh, is great at dissecting this and being able to tell you guys what's happening and what's going to happen. That's the even more important thing, what the trends are. And so we, uh, we're very happy to have Mike um, give his uh, summer 2020 outlook of what's gonna happen. We know a lot of things are crazy right now, uh, not only with the pandemic and the shelter in place, but what's happening you know, also uh, with uh, the BLM movement and everything. And so we just kinda wanna see what's going on in the in the real estate market. So Mike, uh, thanks again for, uh, for putting this together. And uh, with that, I'm gonna let you uh, take over the show. All right, thank you, Derek. Happy to be here. Um, okay, here's what we're gonna do a little, a little um, we're gonna look into the real estate data. We'll start at the national level to give you a, to give everyone a, a feel for what the, the country is doing. It's, it's pretty remarkable what's going on right now. Uh, I then have some, uh, Santa Clara County data, um, and and we can also go into some live data, and I'll look at you know San Jose and maybe some East Bay stuff, and we'll just uh, look at how the Altos reports are, are work, it specifically, uh, and then I'd like to take a little bit of time for using uh, how you use the data in reaching your clients, buyers and sellers, prospects, uh, how we need to talk with them now, how they. Uh, uh, how we can use the data to reach people and help them make more, uh, make better decisions along the way. Uh, we can do, uh, we can use the, the Q and A along the way and Derek will keep an eye on it for if, if there are questions along the way. And, and also at the end, I'll try to save some time and we can, we can do a little bit of a Q and A uh, if there's specific questions near the end. So with that, let's dive in. So, the national, so for those of you who don't know Altos very well, what we, we do is we track the real estate market. We track every house for sale in the country every week, and we bubble up the analytics, every zip code in the country. And we happen to be based here uh, in the Bay Area, but, uh, but, we, but we track the whole country. And um, by watching the active market, we get real insights, real real-time insights, that you don't typically get from traditional the the traditional real estate data numbers. There, those you know sometimes are announcing like now they're announcing March and April numbers, but that was uh, you know years ago. <laughs> so, so we're so we're looking at you know Friday and and reporting on Monday and and so so at the national level, the fascinating thing right now is we are at record low inventory and record high prices. So there's only 719,000 single family homes available for sale in the whole country right now. Uh, and, you know, there's like only a thousand of those are in, in Santa Clara County. <laughs> it's, it's super like here. Um, and, and as a, that one of the fascinating things is that as April, we transitioned into April and May. Each week, we've had more transition, more transactions than new listings coming on. So inventory's actually been shrinking week over week. Available inventory's actually been shrinking week over week. You can see the little orange dots on the chart here. That's the year over year trend. So you normally you have your January, February low inventory for the market. Then March, the spring market starts happening. We get more properties listed. It peaks in June, July, August, and then starts retracting for the fall. Very normal cycle. Uh, as in the last nine years, as mortgage rates have declined, we've had each year, it's, it's become a better deal. Holding your house is cheaper. So it's a better deal to... Hold your house. Even when you sell, more and more people are keeping the old one. 
up, upsizing or downsizing, keeping the old one for rental. That means there are fewer and fewer homes on the market each year. And it has been pretty true for the last nine years in a row. So we started 2020 at record low inventory for the whole country. We started at the very, this is the very right side of the chart here. This started our march up and then ever since then, the, the, there's more properties coming on, but, the, in, but the, the demand, the transaction volume is greater than, than the new listings can handle. So we're actually shrinking. And so we are currently at lower than even like, you know, February of the hottest markets ever. Like it, this is the lowest uh, count of homes available. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is uh, there are currently 4 million homes in the mortgage forbearance program around the country. This is 4 million people in some stage of either not paying uh, their mortgage or uh, having the option to not pay their mortgage. Uh, and so there are people in the forbearance program who are still paying. And what we don't yet know is what happens to those folks. Those, those were initially negotiated at the end of March for 90 day deals. So that's end of June. But so, so it could be at the end of June that you start seeing some of those need to take action, come to market. doesn't feel like there's a few reasons that doesn't feel it's not going to be a flood of distressed sales. Uh, because for a bunch of reasons. One is that everybody's got equity. So the equity, home equity is at a record level. So even if you're, you're not making your mortgage payment and they, so right now the, there's a more, the, more, the foreclosure moratorium is on. So even if you aren't in the, the forbearance program and you're not paying, they're still not foreclosing on your house. So all of these properties are held off the market. And normally some of those in normal, you know, this, there are some properties that are going through foreclosure and several thousand a month and they come to the market, but they're not coming to the market right now. So is it, Mike, is this, um, so this is drastically different than what happened in 2000, 2008, 2009, because people do have equity in the homes and it's not like you just shouldn't have been in that home from the That's right. First That's place. exactly right. So people okay. have equity. So even if it comes to a point where you got to sell, you just sell your house. Right. In 2008, they didn't have equity. And that's so why we had all the away. short sales and the yeah, REO. Exactly. And, and you're just like, well, what am I going to do with this? Like, why should I, right. why I just walk away from it? So uh, very different now. Um, there, but, but when, what we don't know is how these programs unwind. So like, how do you make people start paying their mortgages again? And when can you foreclose? And when do the forbearance programs end? Like, we don't know. Like, there's a lot of that that's still up in the air. And so uh, I, had, uh, you know, point out to, to agents, there are people who are currently in that program who will need to sell, who will likely need to sell. And because it's a good deal to sell right now, like, that would be a good option to work out for them. The worst case scenario is they walk away with their equity. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on. So the, the, despite the fact that we have, we have ultra low inventory right now, there are these program, these properties out there that um, could come to market. Uh, national home prices at the record high. So, in, so supply is low, demand has stayed high, therefore prices are climbing. Median home price in the US is 345,000 bucks. That's a one and a half percent higher than last year at this, at the peak time. Um, and the, the orange line on this chart is one that we do at Altos that we use for leading indicators to tell us where prices are going to be in June, July, August. The, this is, the orange line is the new listing. So it's the cohort of properties that got listed this week in a given week, the new ones that came on the market. What happens is the, the sellers and the listing agents are very wise, it turns out, in their numbers. Uh, they know exactly where the price of the house. When, when you're listing and you, you look down and you're like, you know, that house down the street had four off, multiple offers. We're pricing this one a little bit higher. Or in the other times, you're like, wow, there was, that one stayed on longer than they needed it to and, and there were not that many buyers and you know to price your, li your next listing down a little bit. So those are 
those signals show up in this orange line, the price of new listings first. And what's interesting is that it has, it's, so we took it, uh, an adjustment down at the, this is the right end of the right side of the chart. The orange line took its big step down in March. And then it, since April and May has been climbing week over week. That's, that's bullish sides. That means the, the people selling their homes are expecting the traffic. They're experiencing that and they're pricing for the value uh, for the next couple months. So this home comes on the market now, it gets an offer in July, it closes in August. You start hearing that in the headlines in September, but this orange line is telling you right now what we're gonna see. So um, that's, and it's, it's, it is showing us reasonably strong bullishness through the summer. So just to bring a little bit more clarity to that, Mike, just so um, people might understand, that line, if it was a market that was tapering and maybe flattening a little bit, that orange line actually could be going the opposite way and would indicate that the, the, the indicators are that it's going to be dropping later on. But this one that's is right. Like, that's exactly okay. right. So what okay. it would happen would be, you know, you've got houses on the market. That's the blue line. And, and then the agents, but the agents say, you know, there's no traffic out there. There's no buyer. They know, right? They know it. And so then they list the next house a little bit lower. And so it shows up first in this orange line. Gotcha. And that's the price of new listings. That's what I'm not hearing. I, you know, I sit on some of the uh, office meetings and what we're hearing is like no inventory. Yep. Crazy over asking, like even in the softer, what we considered the softer markets, you know, even, you know, down into the South County kind of areas and stuff, you know, crazy multiple offers and 40, 50, yeah. 60,000 over. And, you know, and I actually, I don't have all those, you know, we don't have time to do all the little local markets, right. but, but there's actually some uh, indication that some of those places that haven't been as hot, the further exurb, the, some further south are actually, are more resilient right now. Like they're experiencing the growth right now. Do, do you think that's, that's really an indication? We, we were trying to figure that out. Is that because, you know, this shelter in place is actually, uh, you know, providing that kind of fuel because people can now work from anywhere that they want. And so if they can get a more, you know, a bigger property down in Gilroy or Morgan Hill and still be working for a company that's in Silicon Valley, that. That could be a possible. Yes. Yeah, so I, I believe that that is, um, uh, that's one of the factors. Uh, another factors is we have in growth times and growth economy times, real estate is aspirational. It's, right. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's luxury, it's moving up, it's, it, but in crisis times, it's security and Ability. safety. Yeah. And, and so it's nesting. And so it shows up in those, in those areas. But it's also why, and this is, a, this is a quick chart of Google search terms for, this is a number of people searching for buying a home or real estate market. And look at the right end of this chart, the space spike in interest as soon as we started going into right. the lockdown, right? It's, it is, yeah, it's super powerful. And where would they rather have their money in the stock market, which is, could be totally volatile or put it into a house, something tangible that they could. That they makes them feel safe. Yeah. Right. Really interesting. You know, we notice this. So in Altos, you know, hundreds of thousands of reports to, from, from agents to their, spheres every week and our views on the, on the market reports is way up like record high for us we know things like virtual tours is up you know all of these pieces coming together in nationally it's also true that millennials are finally in their buying age so they they're reaching their time and so we have the the population shift is happening as well and the millennials are less afraid to transact during the during the COVID crisis, so all of these things are contributing to demand, and, we, and you can see it across the board. I actually have a um, we have another view of demand that is super insightful. One of the challenges with measuring real estate demand over time is the traditional way is to look at transaction volume. So the sales are up, therefore demand must be up. Sales are down, therefore demand is down. But in a supply constrained market, you can't measure demand by the, the transactions because there's a ceiling on the supply. 
So you can't look at, at total transactions and say transactions are down and say, therefore, demand is down because it's supply constrained. So what do we use to measure demand? Instead, we use we can use things like the percentage of homes on the market that have taken a price reduction before they sell. So this number is typically, think about it, typically about 35% nationally. That means about a third of homes are overpriced and they get listed. Sometimes that's intentional, strategic. Sometimes it's a wacky, you know, client. <laughs> it's whatever, it's whatever. Sometimes it's accidental. But then they take a cut and then they sell. About, about 35%. Um, and in hot markets, yeah, 35% think they're overpriced, but only 25% actually have to take a cut. That's because there's more demand out there than, than expected. So there's the like demand is shows up with fewer price reductions. And likewise, when the market cools, price reductions tick up, maybe 35, 40 in the, in the you know, peak of the crisis, 50% of homes on the market have taken a price cut. Like that's, you see like the, it's really a measure of or the organic levels of demand. And it tells us where pricing is going in the future. So a couple of things you can see on this chart right now. So this is national, again, national price chart. It's very seasonal. It, it is, um, it peaks late summer. Then as the inventory falls off, then we start the year fresh, low and, and low price reductions at the beginning of the year are bullish signal. Um, and then they climb through the year. And you can see at the right end of this chart, we started very low, started 20, 2020, started very strong. Like all of the signals were very strong. Then March started to climb because it started to move itself up here. And then boom, we're actually having fewer and fewer price cuts each week. And that's because there are, there's more demand than there is new supply. That it is there, the, the people who have their homes on the market are getting offers, are getting multiple offers. Like there is no signal that says we got to cut our price to move before the summer, right? Um, and so that, so the homes on the market aren't taking price cuts now. That means the offer, the, they're going to be listed higher in July and August. The offers they get are going to, so the transaction prices are going to be higher down the road. So this is a leading indicator of where prices are going to be. Um, you can also see in this chart in 2018, so that's this line here, it went from hot market to cool, it went outside the, this normal band. And if you remember what happened at the end of 2018, the second half of 2018 is mortgage rates climbed all that like six months in a row, they spiked up. And it really cooled off the market. It cooled it off here. It cooled it off in places like Las Vegas. You could see it. Uh, and this is one, one place you could see it in the US, price reduction. So we demand cooled, step back. The homes on the market started taking price cuts. Okay, we're going to do a few more. Uh, the market action index is one more way to view it. And this one is powerful. This is an Altos research way for you to work with your clients when there's a lot of data and you can do a lot of things, but you could ask a client, are you a big geek or a little geek? If you're a big geek, you know, we've got your Altos reports. You can dive in, you can search, around. Even, but if you're just a little geek, I'm going to put this report in your inbox every Monday and I want you to look at one number. This number is this market action index. It works like a speedometer. It's relative levels of supply versus demand. So while we have your house listed, if this number is falling, that's the market giving us a signal about less buyer demand, more seller competition. If it falls below, for example, the 30 mark, which is our buyer's market versus seller's market, if it falls below that, that might be a signal for us that maybe it's time to, to reduce the price. If the house is still on the market and this is falling, I want you to look at this one number. So now it's, you know, it's at a glance, how's the market? Um, and, and it's a powerful way for you to communicate with clients so that they can control their destiny. They can understand what's going on. They don't have to read a bunch of headlines. Um, in, the, in the chart here, you can see it plotted over time. And, and 
the red line here on the edge, this is the weekly reading. And in March, shoom, it dropped quickly, right? That was the pullback that happened in March. And that was all of a sudden, you know, the, the buyers backed off, the sellers are there, but listings are active, and, but no, nothing's happening, nothing's transact for a few weeks and it slides down. Uh, but subsequently, April and May, it's climbed back up and this is the hot market that you were talking about on your, your calls, Derek. Yes. Um, and you can see that nationally um in the market action next i'll show that at the local level too but mike okay. i just got one quick question for you do, do, yes, sir. you when that tracking report does that just do um sfrs or are those is that so, also do any is that just this data is sfr okay. single family uh in your altos reports there's a tab for single family and a tab for condo townhomes okay, so all no, of the markets but it doesn't do any multi multi-unit uh multi-unit is a different that. data set yeah multi-unit is a different data set um that uh, and uh, that we don't typically put into the Altos okay. reports. Just a question that got got asked. So yep, for sure. Um, so let's switch to the Bay Area. This is looking back to the price chart. So this is Santa Clara County, um, and and so what's really fascinating is okay. So here's 2020 begins pricing starts strong. Here's our March the blue line the March adjustment down, and then our recovery week over week. And so we got a, a, a moderate increase in pricing. We're not quite to where we were at, the, at early March. Um, so, so um, like, but, but you can see a couple of things here. The, the orange line is the price of the new listings, which normally has its January bottom and climbed aggressively in the fur, like, because we had a strong 2020 start. And then you could see here's our March drop this right. was the adjustment and so then we've recovered that out so this is showing an, uh, a nice seasonal strong trend for the rest of the summer there's no down there's um uh, there, there are like um like this is a, a moderately bullish leading indicator for the rest of the summer for santa clara county um here's just the other to, thing that just, I just to clarify too this is just for santa clara county this this chart, this, this chart is Santa Clara County. So okay. it's, you know, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 million Santa Clara County. Okay. Um, all the Altos data is, of course, down to the zip code city. And, you know, we, you can jump around and do all of this analysis in your Altos account. Um, 2018, remember, we were talking about the price reductions and how the interest rates rose. Here's what happened to pricing in Santa Clara County, second half of 2018. And... And so was very sensitive to rising mortgage rates. Uh, and, and what's interesting right now is what we have falling rates, which is helping a ton, but we also have tightening mortgage standards, higher down payments, things. So it'll be, it'll be really interesting to me to keep my eye on pricing, uh, price reductions. If buyers, even who want to, our, uh, the, if tougher landings, lending standards uh, restrict our buyer population, we will see it, for example, in these numbers very quickly. Um, so that second half of 2018 is really the notable thing, like how sensitive we are to low rates. And we're in low rates right now, and that's really helping things. Um, of course, you know, we're critically low inventory. So this is looking at inventory for Santa Clara County, single family homes. Um, what's fascinating is that we're actually one of the very few places in the country where inventory is actually climbing week over week. Um, it's, it's, you know, we're much more sensitive like to the dynamics that keep Bay Area inventory low. Prop 13 keeps us low. Um, the, you know, the, our, our construction restrictions, those types of things keep our inventory critically low. Um, one way to look at how low our inventory is, is uh, we use a number uh, per capita inventory, number of homes available to, for sale per the population or vice versa, how many people per home for sale. So 2 million people in Santa Clara County, 
fifteen hundred homes. There, that's that's you know twelve hundred people per available home. If you contrast that to like uh, Phoenix, it's it's five hundred people. It's more than twice as many homes available per shopper in Phoenix, and and it's even tight in Phoenix right now. So like normal times, it might be you might it might be like. 200 people for home per home available and we're at 1200 people that's the critical tight inventory that we see and it's one of the things that keeps our prices chronically unaffordable it doesn't have to be affordable to all 2 million people it's only going to be affordable to 1200 of them right or it's as like as uh, yeah 1500 people you know to buy homes like it is uh so it's super that is is super low um, but we're on a more n sort of normal seasonal pass. You you can see that this blip in in March, down low blip in March. But we've we've been ratcheting fewer than last year at this time. But you know, sort of our normal range of critical low inventory for the past year, few years. Um, oops, wrong way. Um, okay, so price reductions. Let's look at price reductions and the demand into the summer. The nationally our rule of thumb is 35% take price cuts but in the bay area because our inventory is super low and our demand is typically super high our we're very often 15% with price reduction so that's bullish for the for the pricing of the yes here like 35% of the people think they're over bit, overpriced but only 15% have to take a price cut and you could see you know a couple of years ago it was 7% like that's unbelievably low that means more people are overbidding and more people are coming on like prices are climbing so rapidly that you, nobody has to take a price cut it's it's really remarkable however here's 2018 with the rising interest rates so all of a sudden we went from five percent price cuts to 35 percent of the homes have had price cuts so even though that and demand you, might might um still be at a high because of the the mortgage rates and and people not being able to make that work financially yep then that just then the, then what happens is you list your house you're like man it's hot out there we're gonna we're gonna price this one a little aggressively we're gonna price it a little higher and then all of a sudden people are like whoa you know mortgage rates are climbing maybe i should back off and so now all of a sudden you, when you expected that to go in a week and now it's three weeks, uh, you take a price cut to get it in you to, to motivate. And so that's what you, you could see happening in 2018 and we could, you could feel it. Um, 2019 then rates dropped all year long and we settled into a more normal pattern, but 20, 2020 started hot. So, it meant, so price reduction started low. And so here's the thing, we're in these teens in price reductions right now. That means that the homes that are on the market now do not feel like they need a price cuts. That's because they're getting offers, they're gonna sell, um, prices are gonna hold up in July and August, is, that's what that indicates to us. Now, if people, uh, you know, something else happens and, and demand backs way off, then you'll start seeing it in the price reductions number first. These are the par properties on the market that are like looking around going, uh, we haven't had any traffic here for a week. Let's cut this price. And that's where you see it. Interesting. Um, okay, let's switch over to live data. I'm gonna switch there. I'm gonna do a screen share on. Uh, there. And um, okay. Hey, my, so uh, Mike, this is we do have a since we do have several offices in San Mateo County. Could you do a live yes kind of thing of San yes. Mateo? Yes, that'd be great. Sure, I will do it right now. Um, this is the Alto system, and I'm going to add a. Uh, oh, I do already have it. Let's look at San Mateo County. Okay, so, um, so in all the Altos reports, this is, um, we start with the market action index. Remember this is, I want you to look at one number. And while this one's down uh, a fraction 
from a month ago when we were still like we we're still adjusting. It's strong seller's market. That means inventory is sufficiently tight, demand is high, like everybody in this market knows is a strong seller's market. Except it can be important to tr to communicate to buyers. There are a lot of people on the sidelines with cash who think they are looking for a, a crisis bargain or waiting for the bargains to kick in. And and so it can be, you know, it, the, the question I like is, how long have you been waiting for that bargain? You know, <laughs> like, are you think it's going to show up now? You could now? be waiting a long uh, time there. You could yeah. be waiting a long time. So, um, so that's what we're looking for San Mateo County. You can see in uh, the, the profile table here, this is all real-time data. It's all up to the, this week. You can use the little spark lines to see where things have been moving over the past few weeks. Um, and you can see the, here's your March dip in inventory, but a little, you know, steady gradual climb of inventory on the way up. If we go down to the big charts, here's our list price. You know, here's, here's um, March. February and then bam, there's our there's our adjustment, and now we're starting to climb out of it again. So um, this is the weekly number, and then we use a 90-day rolling average to smooth out the trends. But you can also do this for your client. You go, let's zoom in here, and you go, okay, here's where we've been coming out the last few weeks. Prices are starting to rise because demand is uh, is tight, and or inventory is tight, and demand is is. We can also do, for example, the look at properties with price decreases. So now we're here, we're down at, you know, 13% of properties at price decreases right now. So and you can, like, this is how we, we communicate to them that demand is there. Uh, every Altos report, we do, we dive into the price range segments. The high end of the market may be behaving very differently from the low end. And so very often, you know, you may be, you may be dealing with a client who says, wow, you know, I saw, you know, the house down the street. So this is the, the $5 million range in San Mateo County, 135 days. They say, I saw the house down the street, you know, that was on for four months. And you say, yes, but in your price range, you know, 51 days, if you want to buy this house, you got to make an offer. And so, uh, you know, that, that it tells the story very quickly about, you know, where, um, where the market is in your price range. We can do actually do any of these charts up here, like here's days on market by price range. Um, and so you can see how the, the, you know, low end of the market is moving faster than the high end of the market. Um, is this all, is this, I didn't even look at this when you started this. Was this just single family or, or did you do? This is single family homes okay. for San Mateo I mean, County. I just didn't know. And so then there's a condo happens. tab too. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so that's San Mateo County. You know, we can, uh, every Altos report has a search box. So for your clients, your prospects, you can give them San Mateo County or you could give them, uh, you know, uh, Menlo Park, or you could give them any zip code. Um, and when they get the report, they can search. And so they can search to another zip code. You, the good news is you get to see that in your account. So you know, we have, um, there's the Intero account. So agents have access to the, the Intero reports, or the agents can subscribe to like our friend, Nicole, who subscribes and brands their brand their own report. This one's branded for me, but uh, they branded for you, and therefore you get you as the agent get the to know the searches when when your client forwards your report to their friend or their cousin. They they do the search, they get a lead form so that the new user of the report registers so you know who they are. So it's a, it's a powerful way to add contacts to the top of the funnel for people who care about the information. Um, and I can show you, I'll show you a little bit more of that in-, in um, Okay, I do have a, a quick question from Nikul actually. Um, he yes. was wondering how you dis define MAI to your clients or what's a good way to, to describe it? Uh, the, way I, the way I like to say that the market action index is it's an at-a-glance number to answer the question, how's the market? How's the market? 
Yeah. It's a strong seller's market in San Mateo County. Um, this is a, uh, this it's supply versus demand. And so it's a, it's a, it's a measure that works like a speedometer or barometer that, that is like supply versus demand. So when demand buyers are cooling or fewer, that number falls. When there's more demand and tighter inventory, that number climbs. And, and what, uh, what the, kind of variables go into that? I mean, is there a lot of data sources? So there's a lot of things. So, well, supply is the inventory, right? We know the inventory number. Um, and, and, and as I mentioned, you know, the heart, it's always been difficult for the, to, to measure demand by transaction volume in a supply constrained market where like you can't, the sales rate doesn't tell you anything if there's not enough houses for sale. So we use, there's all kinds of numbers that we use in, in the, the math. But it's like it's like looking at things like I was talking about price reductions and uh, relistings, and you know you can see properties like go on a contract, or you know you can see them get withdrawn and re so there, there are all these things that help us gauge uh, organic levels of demand in the market, and it builds into this algorithm that comes out to the you know we turn it into a handy number that works like a gauge. And I know you you are always walk, working on different layouts and different data sources and different ways to dissect the the data are do you have anything on the on the roadmap to actually have these market action indexes maybe on a zip code by zip code basis so you could sure every that. every zip code in the country has zip has okay so you just you have know, to take those out there take those numbers out and and then just kind so of so like we what we do is you just go to that report so if i go to redwood city for example which are you in 601 or 602 i do time for 062 because that's where i live so 62 yeah um <laughs> See, there you go. Your, your market action index is even a little higher than, than, um, the, than the county as a whole. Right. Um, and so, you know, you can look, let's look at price reductions. You know, price reductions here, 0% price reductions at the beginning. <laughs> like there's no house on the market that had taken a price cut. Right now you're at 18%. Like, there's no like inventory at all. Right? There's no, there's no, no inventory houses on the market. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. So, um, so yeah, so every, and then, and then actually when you're in your Alto, in the Alto system, you could go to a report here and go to, you know, any zip code. And I've got the whole country, but let's look at, let's see Redwood city, um, six, two, and you can actually go into the Alto system and get the market action index and get the image live to drop it onto your website. You could have the, the markets that you service the most and just have a nice little layout on your, on your website. On so. your own website. Yeah. And then they click through, they can click through to the market reports. In fact, let me do this. Um, I'll show, a, I'm going to switch back over here to my oops. Uh, share screen to this guy here. And we'll get a couple of these other things as we're talking about this. Um, so when you have, you have, um, you want to use the data to reach people. And especially in uncertain times like now, the, the data is the antidote to fear. So we do it by automatic emailing to your sphere. Um, you know, with the latest data every week, they can always be on top of it. What we do is, you know, when you have your, out, your, your individual account, you can log in and see who's viewing the report. So you know who to call, like all of these things, you put the information at the top of the, 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 you know, all the way through the funnel so that there are people in your contact database who, you know, have been there for years and maybe now is the time for them to buy. Right, but they need to know what's going on. So getting this report from you is super powerful. Um, and by the way, you know, even if you're not an Alto subscriber, you're just using the the ones from the Intero ones. All of the search you can get, all the you can search. You know, you just the difference would be branding it for yourself, having your own contact database, diving into the data for yourself. If you wanted to do an analysis, like let's look at the price of new listings, and that's why agents would do do their own account as opposed to just getting the Mike, I, I know I probably have the answer. I just want to just to verify it. We had a question from Mary regarding those widgets. Um, those are permalinks, I'm assuming, and those actually are attached to the data. So when 
the data updates on a weekly basis, they update in real time. That's correct. Okay. And, and, the, and the click through, then you have the click through to let them see the full report and you have the lead conversion built right into the content. So when they ser- they're new and they search, now the lead form comes up and they interact with the report. That's when the lead form comes up and that's when they convert as new leads for you. It's also why it, the market data works super well in social media. So when you're sharing you know, the data, you can say the market is doing surprising things out there. <laughs> Here is my Redwood City report. Oh, by the way, search any zip code you want. And so now they click through, they get the data, they search, and they, they, you, they convert as a new lead for you. We also do it as a, uh, we have a nice little one-click Facebook ad program. So um, it uses the report as, a, as the, the lead conversion. It uses Facebook lead ads and literally drops, you know, interested people into your database, um, like, you know, it's a super inexpensive, super efficiently way to do it. And you don't have to worry about setting things up. The, the system actually writes the ad copy based on how the market's behaving. So it'll say, oh, the Redwood it's City market is- that. What a wonderful thing. <laughs> is that cool? Um, and so, but it's, but it's great. And, and you know, like, as we were talking about like the Google search stuff earlier, like people need to know, they want to know what's going on. They think they have opinions about it. And so being able to hand them real data is uh, is well, incredibly powerful. You know, here in the Bay Area, you know, we have so many, you know, uh, tech professionals that, you know, data is something that they live and breathe every day. And so to bring that from real estate over to their world and, and help them really kind of dissect it, it's it's a wonderful thing. So yeah, um, yeah for all for of sure. you on the thing, I just I just answered, someone was asking where the Intero um, piece was, and I just sent the link directly to it, but you can also find it in the hub under the, the vendor essentials, um, Altos because it's alphabetical is the first logo right on top. at the top, <laughs> so you can just click on that logo and then you can use the Intero branded ones. But Mike, um, I, I, before we get to the summary, you know, there's a lot of people that have been asking how they can get their own account and what it costs. I don't even know what I don't even know what that is. So yeah, uh, so um, easiest way to do to to um, is to just go to altosresearch.com and book a strategy session. Uh, you buy it, you can, you can sign up right there. Uh, we have a coupon. Coupon, for, we love coupons. <laughs> first, for 100% off, first month free, the coupon code is Intero. So just sign, like, sign up and, and, you know, so you get a full free month of, uh, of Altos. And so um, right there. And, you know, with our team, we can dive in to, like the strategy of like, I want to build my website this way, or I'm, you know, this is what I'm doing with my CRM and I want to integrate with, you know, um, whatever Boomtown or whatever the, the systems that, that we're using. Um, I want to run Facebook ads and, and that's what we'll, you know, we will help. That's what we're in the business of helping you do. What, um, what does that run a month, Mike? Cause that's what, that's what I'm getting. It starts at 79 bucks a month. $79 a month. Yep. Okay. That is a first good. month free with your Intero coupon code. <laughs> um, Nicole's asking very technical questions. Do you have an open API that he can integrate that into? We do. Um, so all of the charts, um, you know, that, that I showed in the um, in the system have uh, you can access via API. So you could pull different ones on the fly. For example, um, if you wanted to go build a um, you know, a query and some, somebody on your site has been looking for homes in Redwood City and you want to pull up the Redwood City chart on the fly, you could do that. Um, and they're all permalinks so that you could then, like one of the things we like to do in your CRM is a lead comes in from anywhere to your CRM, um, whatever, Zillow or, you know, an, an open home, you put it in the CRM, automatically, they say, oh, they're looking for a house in Redwood City. Automatically, the CRM hand, goes to Altos. We get them the, the Nikul report for Redwood City, and we hand that link back to the CRM. So now when you or anyone on your team is looking at that, at that prospect in the CRM, one of the links is, here's the Altos report. So you go, here's, a, oh, 
you know, we were talking about Redwood City. I don't know if you noticed, but there's only 27 homes for sale right now. You bring up the report and you work the data right into the script, right from the CRM. You never have to go log into Altos. Like the data is always in front of you. And then, you know, for example, when they open and, you know, like when they're searching for other things, those events get pushed back to the CRM. So you can see them in, interact with their with your Altos report and you see that data in your CRM. Uh, we need to talk to you about uh, an integration with uh, Moxie um, Engage. So <laughs> let's do it. I'm going to get that on the uh, the docket. So I, I know Becky just asked that question, but that I was already thinking about that, you know, before then. So we can uh, do that. Um, one thing For that sure. Cool did throw at you is um, the ability to do a side by side comparison of a zip of two zip codes. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. And um, coming soon. And we have an advanced uh, in, so this would be for the, the subscriber, the individual subscribers like the cool is. Um, in our advanced charts, we can go dive into all kinds of different, um, you know, for example, we were, I was showing the, the leading indicators, the price of new listings. So that's the advanced chart or an ability to do a geographic comparison or put two stats on one chart at the same time. That kind of advanced work is in there. And the, the geographic comparison is right around the corner for us. Awesome. Well, this was um, beyond enlightening. I, I'm, I'm so glad that we did uh, schedule this. So um, yeah, me too, Derek. No more uh, final questions. Um, Nicole also said he loves your YouTube channel. So uh, go check out. Uh, oh, terrific. Yeah. So that, we've been doing the videos each week, uh, talking about the national market mostly. Um, and it's, it comes out every Monday. That's just go there and subscribe to that channel. Uh, it's there like we're trying to be so you, you can share them with your clients or you can keep an eye on uh, stuff very well um, yourself it, cause, because it's man it's you know it's it's so crazy who would have expected that this is where we would have been 12 weeks into our no, the, no I don't think anyone crisis. if they had a, their uh, crystal ball would have ever uh, predicted what we're what we're predicted seeing that. right now with yeah. uh, with a pandemic kind of going on it's uh, but I you know, I liked your analysis of, you know, just wanting to hold on to something, a tangible asset and, you know, people just do things that are different in a, uh, in a, uh, uh, an uncertain kind of environment. So uh, real estate is an asset that uh, continues to, you know, gain value and it's something that you can actually touch and, and, and feel. So uh, yeah. Mike, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, uh, and, and if anybody uh, just wants to reach out, go to the Altos research. Um, it's just Altos re R E dot com. Is it you, the new you, well, you could go to either one, but Altos okay, research dot com. And then, yeah, there's just a little, you know, book a strategy session button, uh, reach out or, you know, if you're, if you're signing up, use the Intero coupon code and get that free month. Yeah. Um, and we'll get it so wrong. You can uh, see if it works for you. So, 